Okay. After completion of the tympanic branch, we'll describe another branches, further branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve. Okay. So as we have learned, this is the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve. Immediately in contact with that, another branch is given that is known as auricular branch, auricular branch of the uh, that uh, uh, glossopharyngeal nerve. Okay. Further, it passes below the lower border of the stylopharyngeus muscle. This is the stylopharyngeus muscle. Okay, so here we will try to identify and locate the related structure first, then we will describe. This is the styloid process. Styloid process very important projection in the norma basalis. This oblique muscle is stylopharyngeus muscle. Stylopharyngeus muscle. This is the stylopharyngeus muscle. As the name suggests, origin is from the styloid process and it ends near the pharyngeal wall. Pharyngeal wall. It forms a part of the pharyngeal wall. Stylopharyngeus muscle. This is our hyoid bone. This is the hyoid bone. Okay. And this small portion is middle constrictor muscle. The middle constrictor muscle is attached to the hyoid bone. So here there are two important muscles, stylopharyngeus and middle constrictor muscle. And the important bone is hyoid bone. This is soft palate, this is stone seal. And this is the tongue. Okay? And this is obviously the important blood vessel in the neck, common carotid artery, internal carotid, external carotid artery. And this is the internal jugular vein. Again I repeat, the important blood vessel, common carotid artery, internal carotid, external carotid artery, this is the internal jugular vein. This is the styloid process, this is the stylopharyngeus muscle. And this is the middle constrictor muscle which is attached to the part of the hyoid bone. This is the area of the floor of the mouth. The important structure is the tongue. This is the soft palate and this is the tonsil. Okay. So what is the further course of the glossopharyngeal now? It passes obliquely between the internal and external carotid artery. It pierces, it passes below the stylopharyngeus muscle and both stylopharyngeus muscle and glossopharyngeal nerve both passes between superior and middle constrictor muscle of the pharynx because it has to enter inside the pharyngeal cavity. Why? Because it has to supply the important structure there inside the pharyngeal cavity. So which are the important structures it has to supply? For example, first one, soft palate and tonsil. It gives sensory branches to the soft palate and tonsil. It is the sole nerve supply to the soft palate and tonsil. Okay. So, inside the pharyngeal cavity, it supplies the soft palate and tonsil. Then, what is the further branch? Here we can see, it enters in the posterior portion of the tongue. So, it supplies the posterior one-third of the tongue. It supplies the posterior one-third of the tongue. Here, the glossopharyngeal nerve will play a dual role. It carries the sensor, general sensation as well as test sensation from the posterior one third of the tongue, including its circumvallate papillae. Circumvallate papillae. Circumvallate papillae is related to the test sensation. Okay. So glossopharyngeal now will have dual role in the posterior one third of the tongue. So it carries the general sensation as well as Special sensation. So obviously the special sensation in the tongue is test sensation from the posterior one third of the tongue. It gives muscular branches to the stylopharyngeus. It gives muscular branches to the stylopharyngeus. Here we should note that all pharyngeal muscles are supplied by pharyngeal plexus except stylopharyngeus which is supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve. It gives terminal branch to the carotid body and carotid sinus. Now what is carotid sinus? Carotid sinus is the dilatation in the initial part of the internal carotid artery. And carotid body is the glomerularized structure at the bifurcation of the external and internal carotid artery. So it gives the terminal branches to the carotid sinus and carotid body. Okay. So all these are the branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve. Okay. Following are the branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve, tympanic branch which enters into the tympanic cavity, carotid branch which supplies the carotid body and sinus, pharyngeal branch which 
produces the pharyngeal flexors and supplies the oropharynx. Tonsillar and palatine branch for the sensory supply. Muscular branch for the glossopharyngeal nerve and lingual branch for the posterior one third of the tongue. Okay, both sensory as well as special sensors. That is the taste sensors. Our next point that is the vagus nerve. First, we discuss the point. Introduction, origin, and its relation. Here we should note that vagus nerve is the longest cranial nerve, longest cranial nerve. It has got extensive pores throughout our body. Okay, it starts from the brain stem. Which part of the brain stem it starts? It starts from the posterolateral circus of the medulla oblongata. Okay, just below the origin of the glossopharyngeal nerve, vagus nerve takes origin. Then it passes through the jugular foramen, intermediate part of the jugular foramen. It passes vertically straight down between the internal jugular vein and common carotid artery. Okay, through the carotid triangle. As we have learned in the carotid triangle, so many important cranial nerves are related with the carotid triangle. One of these is uh, vagus nerve. Okay, it has got extensive pores in our body. It is the longest cranial nerve in our body. Okay. It is also known as pneumogastric nerve because pneumo means it is related to respiratory system, gastric means related to elementary system. So not only it supplies the our head and neck portion, it supplies the thorax and abdomen. Okay, this is the part of the vagus nerve in the head and neck. This part of the vagus nerve is related in the thorax and the remaining the last terminal portion of the vagus nerve related to supply the important elementary organs. Okay, first we will start with the course. Once it comes out through the jugular foramen, it joins with the cranial part of the accessory nerve. Accessory nerve you will learn in detail in the uh, further topic that uh, what is the relation between the cranial part of accessory nerve and vagus nerve. Usually they join with each other below just below the jugular foramen. Once it come out to the jugular foramen, it passes between the common carotid artery and internal jugular vein. As we have seen in the content of the carotid triangle in previous lectures, vagus now lies between the common carotid artery and internal jugular vein. Okay. Then it passes through the root of the neck and enter into the thorax. In the thorax, it lies behind the root of the lung. Here it supplies the various part of the thoracic cavity. Then it passes through the esophageal hiatus. What is esophageal hiatus? Esophageal hiatus that is the uh, opening for the esophagus inside the diaphragm. It is located at the level of the T10 vertebrae. Okay. And then it enters into the abdominal cavity and supplies the, mainly it supplies the stomach and other part of the elementary organs. Okay, now we will go for the branches. So branches we can discuss like this. Branches in the neck, branches in the thorax and branches in the abdomen. Okay, first we will go for the branches in the neck. Okay, so vagus now has got two ganglia, superior ganglion and inferior ganglion. So from the superior ganglion it gives two branches, meningeal branch and auricular branch. From the inferior ganglion, it gives mainly three branches, branches to the pharynx, branches to the larynx, that is the superior laryngeal nerve, and branches to the carotid body and carotid sinus, and branches from the main trunk of the vagus nerve. So mainly it gives branches to the thorax, that is the superior cardiac nerve, inferior cardiac nerve, and right recurrent laryngeal nerve. Here you should note that it is only right recurrent laryngeal nerve. Okay, left recurrent laryngeal nerve is the branch which is given in the thorax, not in the neck. Okay, so that point kindly note down. And branches in the abdomen. So there are mainly three branches, gastric branches to the stomach, hepatic branches to the liver and related structure, and celiac branches for the autonomic part of the elementary tract. Now, we will discuss the branches one by one. First, we will discuss branches in the neck region. 
So as you have seen, there are two ganglia in the vagus, superior ganglia and inferior ganglia. Okay. Inferior ganglia is larger in size. It is located near the floor of the jugular foramen. There are two branches which takes origin from the blue, uh, inferior ganglia. Meningeal branch and auricular branch. Meningeal branch and auricular branch. Meningeal branch supplies the dura mater of the posterior cranial fossa. Meningeal branch supplies the dura mater of the posterior cranial fossa. Actually, it is the recurrent branch. That is why it is going to supply the meninges. Then, auricular branch. Auricular branch supplies the part of the pina. Okay, mainly the ponca. Okay, further uh, detail about the sensory supply of the pina you will learn in the separate lecture. Then branches from the inferior ganglion. Inferior ganglion gives three branches. Pharyngeal branches, which is going to form the pharyngeal plexus. Laryngeal branch, which is known as superior laryngeal lobe. And third, branches to the carotid body and carotid sinus. Now, what is the pharyngeal branch? Pharyngeal branch is going to form the pharyngeal plexus. Now, what is pharyngeal plexus? It is the intercommunicating nerve plexus which is located on the middle constrictor muscle of the pharynx. Which is located on the middle constrictor muscle of the pharynx. Okay. It is formed by the following nerve. Mainly it is by the vagus nerve. In addition to that, pharyngeal branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve as we have seen in the previous topic. Then, cranial part of the accessory nerve and also, it receives the contribution from the cervical sympathetic ganglion, mainly superior cervical sympathetic ganglion. So, pharyngeal plexus is formed by the pore structure. It receives the contribution from, from the pore structure, 9th, 10th and 11th cranial nerve and cervical sympathetic ganglion. All these structures are going to supply the, all the muscle of the pharynx except stylopharyngeus which is supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve. Okay, so kindly underline that point. All the muscles of the pharynx are going to be supplied by pharyngeal plexus, which is mainly receiving its contribution from the vagus, except stylopharyngeal muscle, which is supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve. Then, superior laryngeal branch. What do we mean by that? Superior laryngeal branch. Superior laryngeal branch is divided into two. External laryngeal nerve and internal laryngeal nerve.